50 years ago, our oceans were quite different to what they are today. While the plunder of their resources had already begun, the impacts of pollution and overfishing weren't yet being fully felt. But things have changed at an alarming rate. Commercial fishing on an industrial scale, drilling for oil and gas, the environmental toll of shipping accidents, and more recently, the impact of climate change have damaged the health of our oceans and badly impacted mar marine life. For world-renowned ocean scientist and deep-sea explorer Dr. Sylvia Earle, saving our oceans has become a rallying cry needing global support and participation, something she believes is possible. Erin caught up with the Grand Dame of our oceans on a recent visit to Cape Town. Saturday morning and Long Beach Simonstown is awash with swimmers, paddlers and even man's best friend. And you've brought your dog with you, Brian. <laughs> People who have come to welcome, to see, to acknowledge Sylvia Earle. For many, she could be any retiree, a summer swallow here in South Africa to soak up the sun. <laughs> But in the world of marine research and ocean conservation, 88-year-old Dr. Sylvia Earle is a rock star. Very inspiring. Everybody. Even the dog. They, they had two dogs. They had <laughs> the, two. the inflated dog and, and then the they had the real one. dog. <laughs> <laughs> she's called the Joan of Arc of the Ocean and she's leading the charge to save our seas. A moment in time, Sylvia calls it a crossroads when communities and countries can join forces and play a role. We're not as aware of the changes in climate and, what, and the causes or the loss of diversity, why it matters. 50 years from now, it will be too late to do what we can do right now because we're on a trajectory to lose like a million species by the end of the century unless we take action right now. Sylvia has been diving, exploring and researching the ocean for over six decades. One of a few who's seen how the sea has changed. A witness to what we can do to the natural world. I wish you would use all means at your disposal to ignite public support for a global network of marine protected areas, hope spots. Sylvia's wish has led to what she calls hope spots. While marine protected areas are official designated zones enforced by legislation, hope spots are areas identified and driven by their communities. Pressure groups bringing together the world's best brains in marine biology. There are now 159 hope spots around the world and still counting. False Bay, here in the Western Cape, is one of them. Through her NGO, Mission Blue, Sylvia and the team travel the world, driving awareness on the urgency of saving the ocean. Workshops and conferences like this at Cape Town's Two Oceans Aquarium foster ideas and motivate. I'm just so glad to be here. The phosphorus, the nitrogen, removing them out of the system, breaking those links. Lobbying governments and inspiring people. She says there's nothing she'd rather be doing. That is out of the water. I am just driven because I'm aware of how most people simply don't know. And you can't care if you don't know. So I feel like I can't afford to be self-indulgent and splash around. Sylvia's been splashing around for most of her 88 years. Free diving off Florida's coastline as a teenager, it was only as a student studying marine biology that Sylvia and her lecturer managed to get hold of one of the early prototypes of the scuba suit. It was 1953. I had two words of instruction. Breathe naturally and over the side. And it was hard to come out of the water again. I wanted to stay. <laughs> Do you still feel that rush when you get into the water now? It's like going home. 
That feeling of weightlessness and expectation. You don't know what you're going to see, but always something, always someone or lots of individuals that you're just glad to have a chance to meet them. Diving into the ocean is like diving into the history of life on Earth because you see the kingdom of life. She's seen parts of the world we can't imagine and gone to depths thought impossible to reach. So you, amongst your many accolades, hold a deep sea diving record. When I had the chance to use the system called JIM, J-I-M, named after the first person willing to put it on, and was able to go to 400 meters. It was the deepest solo dive at the point. And then later, going to 1,000 meters, I was taken on the front end of a little submarine called the Star Two, and stepped off the front of it. So I was walking connected only by a communication line to the submarine, but not back to the surface. What did that feel like? To be able to be able to walk on the ocean floor, to be able to be a witness to see what was down there. Now a team of divers will attempt to live for two weeks as quiet residents on the sea floor. Ironically, these aquanauts are not men with extraordinary physical endurance and stamina, but five young and attractive women. This might seem like a frivolous jaunt, but that's more to do with the media's perception of women at the time. It was 1970 when Sylvia led the first all-female team of aquanauts, marine researchers and scientists, to live in an underwater habitat off the coast of the Virgin Isles in the Caribbean, having the gift of time to study the marine life continuously. It's just so amazing to be able to go back to see the same creatures in the same place day and night and get to know them as individuals. Hey, we're living warm and dry inside an underwater laboratory with bunks and refrigerator and all the comforts of home. <laughs> but it's when we went outside that we really went home. Forty-one years later, Sylvia returned to the same area. It was a different picture. Right in front of her eyes, she saw the extent of the problem. It was like a ghost town. So we're talking 40 years. That's a rapid change to lose the abundance of life so fast. Industrial and overfishing, dumping, pollution, all destroying our seas. It's Mission Blue's goal to turn that around. We're alive because the ocean is alive. It's a living ocean that is now in trouble because of what we put into it, because of massive amounts of wildlife that we have extracted. We have the best chance we will ever have to shift, to say, oh, now I see, now I understand. And once you see, you can't unsee. The oceans absorb the greatest volume of carbon dioxide and emit the greatest volume of oxygen compared to any ecosystem on land. And a healthy ocean keeps the Earth's climate in balance. Look at this. It's an ocean full of whale sharks. In South Africa, 5% of our coastal waters are demarcated marine protected, which is reasonably high compared to most other countries. Enforcement, however, could be better. Sometimes community activism is the difference between official neglect and effective marine protection. Recently, the South African Navy cancelled their planned underwater explosive training in Simonstown after a show of force from the community. An example of the muscle a hope spot can flex. Nobody can do it all, but everybody can do something, and, and that's the solution. It's a team sport. Yay, team.
Right now, 8% of the oceans around the world have some sort of marine protection. Sylvia's pushing for 30% by 2030. Extending marine protection to the high seas, the areas of the oceans not controlled by any country. If we can protect half the world, the blue half, that is beyond national jurisdiction, we could go a long way to stabilizing climate, stabilizing temperatures, stabilizing the loss of diversity. It's the blue heart, the blue heart of the planet. It's where oxygen is generated, where carbon is captured. The high seas is one of the best chances we'll ever have right now. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.